What's up, y'all? My name is Trevor Went. I'm a visual artist raised in Virginia Beach, Virginia. I make art to challenge perspectives and give hope to the marginalized and oppressed. And we're basically all worldwide quarantining or social distancing to protect ourselves from the coronavirus. And so I know that can get difficult. I know it can get difficult to be stuck inside all day. So I wanted to give y'all something to do and not everyone has a DSLR or a mirrorless camera or something like that to take photos with. And so I wanted to make this really accessible for as many people as I possibly could. So here are six tips on how to create quarantine smartphone self portraits. So before we get started, you're going to need a couple of things. First off, you're going to need a smartphone. Doesn't have to be the latest and greatest. I shoot with an iPhone 7 Plus and it works great for me. So use what you have and get creative in your house. Second, you're going to need something to hold your camera up with. I personally have a specific attachment for my tripod that is meant for smartphones. So I use that and that's what I'm gonna use today, but you can also use something like a couple of boxes or you can use some books. Make sure you use something sturdy though, because we don't want any cracked screens or cracked cameras or anything like that coming from this video. Now, here are the tips. Number one, pay attention to the light in your home. Know where the light is coming from and the best time to shoot in different spots and find interesting shadows and different things like that. This will give you a better idea of the type of photo that you want to create, the type of mood that you're looking for, and then some inspiration that you can check out on Pinterest or Visco or any place like that for inspiration. Number two, prop your camera up. Use a smartphone attachment for a tripod like I talked about earlier or you can use something as simple as books on a table or boxes on a table. Just be creative, but also be careful. Number three, make sure you use the self timer in your smartphone and be patient because it's gonna take a minute to get the shot that you want. Number four, control your exposure. A lot of people don't know that on most smartphones, you should be able to tap on the screen and drag down in order to change the exposure. I know on iPhones, if you hold down, you can lock the autofocus and the auto exposure, which can get a little bit difficult when you can't really see it if it's facing the other direction, but you could also use the selfie camera if you'd like to, but you can totally change the exposure and you will need to in most situations for your camera to pull off a decent exposure of you. Number five, use the different focal lengths of your cell phone if you have them. I know in the iPhone 7 Plus, there is a 28 millimeter and a 56 millimeter. And so I can use those different focal lengths to get different looks. And so use them creatively. See the different ways that you can get different styles of shots with different focal lengths and play around with it and just try stuff. I mean, you have all the time in the world right now. And tip number six, embody a mood. A lot of y'all ask about posing and we'll do a full video on that at a different time, but try to figure out your motivation, what mood you're trying to go for with your portrait. And then you can look up reference images of sad or angry or happy, whatever those things are to give you a feel for how you can pose. And the last kind of quick tip I'll give on this is don't touch your face. We're not supposed to touch our faces right now. So after you shoot, you want to edit your photos. I personally use the mobile app Visco for my mobile edits, but you can use any app that you want to. But I'm going to give you all just a quick time lapse of me editing some of the photos that I shot. So when I'm working in Visco, A6 is my go to preset a lot of the times. Kind of messing with my exposure here to see what it looks like uh, between my highlights and my shadows. But A6 is doing too much, so I drop it back some. Messing with my contrast and seeing how that looks between my highlights and my shadows, as well as saturation and what my skin looks like. And then messing with highlights and shadows specifically to try to get that right in the range that I want to get the contrast ratio between, again, my highlights and my shadows the way that I want it to go. And so it's taking a little bit of trial and error, but I'm getting closer and closer. It's pretty close looking where it is looking pretty good and saturation is close and then i'm gonna mess with my skin tone to try to get a little bit more green in my skin and that's it 
So for the last image, I'm using A6 again as my preset and I'm trying to get a gauge on what it looks like without it, what it looks like with it, and trying to get it in the right kind of concentration of that preset. Now I'm getting my crop right to try to get the nice balance between my arm and my head. And then from there, my arm needs to come down a little bit in exposure, so you're gonna see me messing with my contrast and my highlights to bring that arm down some. And that's it. Here are a few of my favorite images from my shoot. So straight up, you don't have to have the fanciest equipment to create great stuff. So please stay inside, get creative in your own homes, continue to practice social distancing. If you like this video and gain anything from it, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe to this channel if you haven't, and hit that notification bell situation so that you can know whenever I drop a new video. And I've got some dope stuff coming, so stay tuned y'all. And I'll catch you on the flip. Be safe, be easy, peace.